When new technologies hit an inflection point, all of a sudden it can take off. We saw it with CDs. We saw it with smartphones and cell phones before that. It always happens and it follows a trend even around the world. I've got uh, my good friend Mark here from The Tesla Life who found this story and decided uh, that this particular source has enough graphs for us to make sense of it. We're going to discuss that. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. So, Mark, this is a trend we've seen around the world. You get to yeah, a certain this, point. This trend happens with, with everything, right? Anything that goes on a uh, trajectory up uh, follows these type of things. Of course, the trajectory can be more steep in some cases, but uh, it gives you an idea as to uh, what the tipping point is with new technology. And in this case, we're talking EVs. Are we now? <laughs> We are. We are. I'll, I'll just save the spoiler alert. You scared me. I thought we were going some other direction. <laughs> this is a great picture because it makes it look like you glued two together. But no, Tesla Roddy found one that uh, just looks like that. Uh, Tesla and other EV brands are becoming more popular around the world. Now, uh, I'm confident that this trend is isolated. Is it? I don't think so. I don't no. think it's isolated. I think it's worldwide. Well, if you look at this, so this is a, a neat chart. This says once a country hits 5% EV sales, they enter the chart right here, right? Yeah. And this is every year after they hit 5%. So Correct. we got this and it's noisy, but it is following the same trend. Some years it spikes, some years it doesn't. And I imagine some of these spikes are in different, are in years that coincide with each other. But since they all start at a different point, they get there. Yeah, and you can definitely see from the chart that, you know, some of the gray lines are up and down. So there are, you know, policies change in companies uh, and countries. There are some policies come in uh, with a certain government and then they go out with another one. So you've got this up and down thing that happens uh, based on what the country is trying to do. And this chart even shows that over the multiple years after they hit 5%. And some countries start with the carrot and then get rid of the carrot. and some don't implement a, a sufficiently rigid stick to take its place. Um, and yes, there, I assume Germany had this big spike here when they were offering incentives that were too high to be sustainable, where you could buy a car and then get a huge discount, thousands of dollars, maybe 5,000, I don't remember. And then six months later, or even less, sell it on to Eastern Europe and it's gone. So Bloomberg did this report. And by the way, there's a lot of hate for the mainstream media and how they're doing terrible work. Right. But they are often the source of the news. I don't hate mainstream media. I don't think they should hurry up and die. I don't call them fake news. I call them no pushback news. There's no pushback on Bloomberg. You don't get to have a thorough analysis type conversation in the comments. If comments are on on any of these sites, they're a dumpster fire. That's why X is so valuable. We get to get context on these important stories from people we know and trust. So here we are looking at, uh, it tells us when the first quarter was. Norway at number one. Let's scroll back up and look at that. Norway is this line up here that's, oh man, it's so pretty. It's up in the, you know, 80 to 90 range and holding pretty steady. Exactly. Norway was one of the countries that had a number of those great carrots they were offering uh, people uh, up front. Uh, they were using their oil revenue uh, to supplement the purchase of EVs and uh, the ability to give people with EVs the option of having free parking, uh, free ferry rides, all these things to try to push EV adoption. And it worked so well uh, that um, they've had to start to uh, reduce uh, some of those uh, bonuses that they were giving out. Well, and I think they've got one of the earlier targets to be completely internal combustion free. And part of that is they've supported the building of charging infrastructure and policies that support EVs more generally. If there was a rule that said by 2030, every apartment building must have at least 20% of their parking stalls with at least level two charging, this trend would continue into the U.S. Per 5%, there we go. So Iceland, 
big jump. Not big numbers, small country, big yeah. jump. Denmark and so on. China at 23.8%. And of course, interestingly, the U.S. way down at 8%. Now, the U.S. only hit their 5% mark a couple of years, two years ago. But they are on a real low trajectory. The worst, the second worst on the list, it appears. But we've also got some, well, I guess there's some that are doing slightly worse, but I don't know how many of those even make the chart. Canada it's, made the list at 9.4%. It's still appreciably better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not too much to brag about, but uh, the, the um, North America is lagging behind. Uh, when you look at it compared to the European countries, uh, they certainly have the jump and continue to uh, outpace us all. Yes. So there's a lot of, you remember when only a few people had pagers or cell phones. And then a few years later, it felt like half the people had them. And a few years after that, everyone had them. And it was the same thing with smartphones. Um, it was the same thing with DVD players. When I worked in broadcast electronic sales, my first job out of college, we had someone come in and show us adoption rates because we still had some of the older engineers who kept saying, that certain technologies we were working on would, would never amount to anything. And they showed us the rate of adoption from cassette tapes, CDs, and then DVDs. And cassette tapes took a very long time to catch on. CDs took a much shorter time, maybe 10 years. And DVDs, we were only a couple years into it, and they were already catching up with CDs. And everything after that went even more quickly. So I'm excited to see that this is a real possibility that every country will follow a trend like Norway, like some of these. I mean, there's some big numbers after just four years getting from 5% to 60, 50, 40%, quite a few above 30. In a very yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's something that um, it's interesting that 5% is the amount that they've cracked. That is the point of no return, apparently. You get above 5% and all of a sudden you're into this track uh, where you've got this uh, accelerating uh, return on the number of people that uh, take up the technology. So let's look at some of the reasons that that could be. One of them uh, is obviously you have to hit critical mass to get charging. You've been driving an EV for a while now. What yep. changes have you seen in charger availability and charging infrastructure over the last, what, six years you've had an EV? I've had one for almost 10 years now. Oh, wow. Mm. Oh, that's right. You've had, you've got a 2018 now. You had a Volt before that? What'd you have? I had a 2012 Volt, correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it what was, changes have you seen? The, the big changes certainly has been in uh, public charging. Uh, level two charging uh, has exploded uh, in our area. And of course, about four years ago, three and a half years ago, all of a sudden DC fast charging was big to market, whereas it was non-existent or very little uh, before that point. So the charging infrastructure that has grown in my region uh, has been exponential. Uh, there's been a, uh, if you look at your plug share app, uh, you, I was shocked about the amount of L2s and now L3s or DC fast charging that is available and plotted out on those maps. It's something that uh, has happened all across uh, our province. And when you look at the map of chargers and charger availability, go to a site like plugshare.com and zoom in to your area and just keep zooming in. Go ahead and keep all the different plug types turned on because maybe you have an adapter or maybe it's not the right car for you, but for someone else. And just the more you zoom in, the more you find. And unlike gasoline, you can find free chargers, not a whole lot of juice about what you'd get at home probably, but there ain't no free gas. That's not a thing. You could work at Exxon and not get free gas. So that's, you are absolutely correct uh, there. And, and that certainly has waned over time. Uh, there's, you know, but with more chargers, there are still some businesses that are offering free charging just to try to get you as a customer to come and shop at their uh, place of business for half an hour or 45 minutes. It's a, it's a thing. Uh, it makes sense that uh, you're, it's, it's almost to them. It's like the cost of providing someone with a, a cup of coffee. 
it's not all that expensive to uh, provide an L2 charge for 30 minutes uh, in the parking lot. So a lot of these businesses will get rates in the 10 cents per kilowatt hour uh, range. If they're pumping, you know, four kilowatts an hour, which is pretty good for level two, that's two kilowatts in 30 in 30 minutes. So we're talking 20, maybe 30 cents. If an advertiser told you for 20 or 30 cents, I can get someone who will come to your business for 30 minutes and for 40 cents, I'll double it. They will be here for an hour. You would take that all day. And some of these, and some of these companies do now they don't get that price. Of course, blink or charge point or whomever needs to make their little markup. And some of them take a more egregious markup than others. And I'm okay with that because if it weren't for that markup, they wouldn't be doing it. And I'd rather have, if the company's willing to pay it, okay, make it a dollar. Great. If I can get customers here to hang out for an hour for a dollar, you're going to put me on your charging map interactive in their car, in everybody's car for a dollar a customer. Fantastic. And if it gets too expensive, we can say it's not free anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now it costs money. In the future, maybe it's a revenue center. Who knows? Who cares? Of course, as as you were mentioning, the um, adoption rate continues to grow because of things like charging, right? If charging increases, it becomes more publicly aware. When you're not owning an EV, you're still going to these businesses and places uh, that you're visiting, and you're seeing cars plugged in. You're seeing charging stations. You're seeing something of infrastructure that was never there before, and it starts worming in your head about, Maybe I should be looking at an electric vehicle instead of what I'm doing, or maybe my next vehicle, I should be looking at this new technology because it seems to be catching on. So the next part of that is you talk to your coworker who has one. You've been that coworker. Someone comes up, Mark, I know you've got a, you've got a Tesla. Um, you know, aren't those inconvenient? Aren't those expensive? Exactly. You can, you let your family, friends, neighbors, people that ask you questions about the vehicle. It's it's very easy for you to answer because you've been living it for a few years. You know the ups and downs and you can provide them with real information that they're not getting from the mainstream media in most cases. They're just getting these hit pieces or clickbait uh, about dramatic stories uh, that uh, are not necessarily telling you the right, the whole picture about EV ownership. A lot of it is they don't know the right questions to ask. No one's going to write an article called, here's how easy it is to find chargers. But someone will ask you at work, how do you even find chargers? And you say, I don't, my car does. It does it all automatically. It it knows everything that I can't. Uh, And then the next step is the butts in seats. How many people would you guess you gave a test drive to? Not a test drive, but a ride. Let me see what an electric car is about. I have probably given maybe 150, 200 rides uh, in the time I've had an electric vehicle. Right. And every one of them has questions and now they've got answers. The more, and some of those went on to buy cars and some of those went on to give their 150 test drives. It's a pyramid scheme. Yeah, exactly. But it is, but it is because it's something new and you don't know what you don't know. I didn't buy a smartphone until someone brought it in front of me and showed me what it does. Because that was my question is why? Why do I want this less sophisticated thing? Because it's got the internet. Okay, great. But the internet wasn't that exciting at the time. I had to be shown what I didn't know. Exactly. So all, so all of these things, it creates momentum. It creates a, a cascading effect. All these things layer on top of each other. They're cheaper. They're better. They're quieter. They're more fun. And When I take friends and family around for test drives, every holiday I go to, someone's like, oh, I haven't gotten a ride yet. Get your butt in the car. And then, of course, I take it out of chill, as you're obliged to do, and I give them a little fun show. And then when I'm done, I just hit the stock and let it drive us back. And that's when the mind away, doesn't it? It blows (laughs) them away. Like, what is going on? So it's fun. So we're in the S-curve. It's getting exciting. Hey, guys, do me a favor. Head over to uh, the, the Tesla Life there. Well, see what Mark's up to. I was a guest last this very week. It was a lot of fun. And uh, I shared some information there that I've never shared on this channel. That was actually uh, some secret sauce about how I come up with my numbers. I figure if I share it here, you know, not enough people will head over. So 
Guys, in the comments, what did I miss? What did I misunderstand? Stay tuned, stay juicy, all that good stuff. You know what you're doing. And uh, to the rest of you clever robots, uh, can't wait to see you on the flippity flop.